Here's what we're covering today on Verify This. President Biden withdrew from the 2024 presidential race and endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Do we believe in the promise of America? In the wake of that historic decision, misinformation about Harris has been rampant online. We sort through what's true and what's false. Then, we look into claims that you can buy bullets out of vending machines in some grocery stores. Plus, the DMV is all down. We're going to be stuck here for over 48 hours, they're saying. The blue screen of death impacted a lot of people this week. We verify whether it really also took over the sphere in Vegas. Then, we're answering questions about Project 2025, including whether it aims to eliminate gay marriage and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The Olympics are underway. Athletes from around the world are in Paris to compete for their country. We verify whether Olympic athletes get paid to participate. We have the answers to those questions and more coming up on this week's show. Welcome to Verify This. Spotting misinformation on your social media feeds is tough. That's why we're here. We answer your questions and fact check viral claims so you know what's true and what's false. I'm your host, Ariante Till. Let's get started. I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. Biden bowed out of the 2024 presidential race and immediately endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. But his endorsement doesn't make Harris the official nominee. That process happens in August at the Democratic National Convention. An Associated Press survey shows Harris has secured the support of enough Democratic delegates to become her party's nominee against Donald Trump. Since Biden's endorsement, you may have seen these images and videos circulating on social media about Vice President Kamala Harris. Some claim she has ties to Jeffrey Epstein. Another claims she received donations from Donald Trump. And yet another claims to show her struggling to speak coherently. Today is today. And yesterday was today yesterday. Using these sources, here's what we can verify about these claims. The image purporting to show Harris with Jeffrey Epstein is fake and has been digitally altered to include Epstein. Using image forensics tool Revi, Verify traced this image of Harris to a Getty Images photo taken in 2015 at a black tie dinner in Los Angeles. The original photo shows her with her husband, Doug Emhoff. Epstein's head was superimposed onto Emhoff's body. Next, the donation check from Trump is real. In fact, he donated to Harris twice while she was California's attorney general. Campaign finance records show that in 2011 and 2013, before Trump was a politician, he donated a total of $6,000 to Harris. A spokesperson for Harris told the Sacramento Bee in 2020 that she gave that money to a charity in 2015. And finally, this video of Harris appearing to fumble her words is fake. Using video forensics tools Invid and Revi, Verify traced the video back to a speech during a 2023 reproductive freedom rally at Howard University, which was live streamed on Facebook. In the real video, she says, So I think it's very important, as you have heard from so many incredible leaders, for us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present. While Harris did not make the today is today comments in the altered video, some people still criticize her actual remarks, calling them word salad. New on verifythis.com. Approximately 32% of Americans own a gun, according to a 2023 Pew Research Center survey. Ammunition for guns can typically be purchased online or in retail stores. But can you also buy bullets in a grocery store vending machine like these viral posts claim? It may seem wild, but yes, you can. American Rounds, an ammunition company, confirmed that it sells ammunition through its automated dispensers at eight grocery stores across Alabama, Oklahoma, and Texas. A post on X with millions of views shows an image of Donald Trump riding in a golf cart, claiming it was taken on July 14, the day after the assassination attempt at his rally. But the photo is two years old. Using Revi, a reverse image search tool, Verify traced the image to a 2022 photo from the Associated Press. Not only is this image two years old, but it was taken from his golf course in Sterling, Virginia, not in Bedminster, New Jersey, as some of the viral posts claim. You can read more about those stories and more by going to verifythis.com. Coming up, we continue to get questions about Project 2025. We looked into what the plan says about gay marriage and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. 
Plus, the Olympic Games are finally here, but do the athletes get paid to participate? Welcome back. Let's verify some more claims. The blue screen of death that Microsoft Windows users see when the system crashes took over many computer screens after a routine software update by cybersecurity company CrowdStrike caused what is being described as the largest IT outage in history on July 19th. CrowdStrike said the issue believed to be behind the outage was not a security incident or cyber attack. The outage grounded flights, knocked banks offline, and media outlets off air. As the disruptions caused by the outage were being reported, an image went viral, appearing to show the Las Vegas sphere with a blue screen of death on the building's iconic digital screen surface. But is that true? Here's what we can verify using these sources. A spokesperson with Sphere Entertainment confirmed the image is not real. Verify ran the image through TinEye, a reverse image search engine, and found the exact same image has appeared online since at least July 2023. More evidence that this couldn't have been taken during the July 19th global tech outage. We continue to get questions from many of you about Project 2025. Casey Decker looked into one question that came in repeatedly regarding what the project says about family makeups. Project 2025 is an extensive proposal to quickly enact dozens of conservative policy goals in the event Donald Trump wins the presidential election. Many Verify viewers have been asking us about what specifically the project proposes. Ginny and several other people wanted to know whether the project says the only valid family is a working man married to a stay-at-home woman with children. So Ginny, let's verify. Our sources, the text of the project, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The details of Project 2025's proposals are laid out in a 900-page book called The Mandate for Leadership, put together by a conservative think tank called the Heritage Foundation. We examined the entire document, and it never uses the phrase, the only valid family, or says certain family makeups should be illegal. But this answer needs context. At several points, the project argues the government should actively promote heterosexual marriage and parenthood. At one point, the authors say, quote, families comprised of a married mother, father, and their children are the foundation of a well-ordered nation and healthy society. One policy the project suggests to this end, expanding the use of federal funds for healthy marriage and relationship education programs. And it says this money should be available to religious institutions that only recognize heterosexual marriages. Project 2025 authors say Congress should encourage marriage by looking for and changing any pieces of the tax code they say might be making it more financially beneficial for couples not to get married, especially when it comes to welfare programs. While the project doesn't explicitly say same-sex couples should be barred from adopting, it says the government should protect religious adoption agencies that refuse gay couples. We didn't find anything in the project arguing women should stay home with their children and not work, though it did say, quote, working fathers are essential to the well-being and development of their children and did not mention working mothers. Have more questions about Project 2025? Head to verifythis.com for an extensive list of what the proposal does and doesn't say. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Another claim circulating about Project 2025 that we tackled this week? Does Project 2025 recommend dismantling the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration? Here's what we can verify. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA, is a federal agency that provides daily weather forecasts, severe storm warnings, and climate change research, among other things, through its six main offices, which include the National Weather Service. NOAA shares its findings for free with other weather services and government agencies. A viral post on Facebook claims Project 2025 contains a plan to get rid of NOAA. But is that true? Let's verify using these sources. Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation's plan to transform the government in favor of conservative social policies and ideals, is outlined in this 922-page book called Mandate for Leadership, the Conservative Promise. Verify went through the document, and yes, it does include a proposal to dismantle NOAA. The chapter about the Department of Commerce, authored by Thomas F. Gilman, says NOAA is too focused on climate change, work that he describes as the fatal conceit of planning for the unplannable. While he believes some of NOAA's work is useful, 
Gilman maintains that its current organization corrupts its useful functions and recommends that it be broken up and downsized. In Project 2025, Gilman also suggests that the National Weather Service should start charging private companies like AccuWeather to use its data. But environment experts like Alice C. Hill, senior fellow for Energy and the Environment at the Council on Foreign Relations, say NOAA's research is critical for giving local decision makers better tools to respond to climate change. With your Verify, I'm Josh Sidorowitz. Coming up, ever wonder if athletes get paid to compete in the Olympics? Stay tuned for the answer. Welcome back to Verify This. More than 800 American athletes are expected to compete in this year's Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games. Brandon Lewis looks into whether most will receive money for participating. Athletes often say representing their country at the Olympics is the highlight of their careers. One Verify viewer texted us to ask, do athletes get paid to go to the Olympics? So let's verify. Our sources are Team USA, USA Swimming, USA Wrestling, World Athletics, and the International Olympic Committee. The IOC doesn't pay athletes, nor does it require countries to pay athletes, but there are ways for the competitors to make money at the Olympics. This year, for the first time, gold medal winners in 48 track and field events will receive a $50,000 prize. The money is awarded by World Athletics, the international governing body for events like track and field and running. National Olympic committees and governing bodies may also give their athletes some money. The U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee gives American athletes a bonus of $37,500 for each gold medal they earn, $22,500 for silver, and $15,000 for bronze. Some sports governing bodies like USA Swimming use registration fees to give top-tier athletes a monthly stipend. USA Wrestling has a Living the Dream medal fund that awards a stipend of up to a quarter million dollars to medal-winning wrestlers. Other sports get corporate sponsors and use the proceeds to cover some of an athlete's expenses. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. That sound means it's time for a Did You Know, where we feature one relatively unknown interesting fact that we, of course, have verified. So here goes. Olympic host cities usually pick a mascot. Previous mascots have been all sorts of animals, from pandas to bears to tigers. But did you know that a hat is the official mascot for the Paris Olympics? It's called the Olympic Frige, a nod to a traditional hat that was once worn by French revolutionaries. If you liked that did you know, sign up for our daily newsletter. It has a new did you know every day, as well as three fast facts and more of our most recent stories. To sign up, go to verifythis.com slash email. On behalf of the entire Verify team, I hope you enjoyed the show and that you learned something new today. I'm your host, Ariane Daytil. If you're craving even more fact checks, head on over to the Verify This YouTube page. That's where you can find bingeable fast facts, extended interviews with our experts, and lots and lots of fact checks. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, if there's something else that you want us to verify, just send us a text to 202-410-8808. And if you send us your question as a video, you could end up in the show. Our number is still on your screen, so make sure you lock us in, and we'll see you right back here next week with answers to more of your questions verified.